What follows are twenty-five of the most egregious, unsound, absurd, asinine, preposterous, confused, contradictory, disjointed, inchoate, muddled, fatuous, irrational, idiotic, humorous, false, phony, mistaken, fallacious, inadequate, invalid, deceptive, unintelligible, unbelievable, unconvincing, unscientific, unreasonable, incorrect, implausible, illogical, silly, irrelevant, nutty, specious, meaningless, and common creationist arguments. And, of course, why they are wrong. Foundational Bias In foundational bias, you admit bias towards a certain conclusion, even before making an argument. Foundational bias is not based on evidence or logic, but is instead based upon personal preference and belief. Therefore, foundational bias opens the door to all logical fallacies. Foundational bias is usually unstated, and rarely declared as openly as Ken Ham in this next clip. Just remember, this man wants his ideas taught in classrooms. Well, let me explain it this way. Let's use our biblical glasses. We're going to put in our biblical glasses, okay, like we talked about in, in other lectures. We're going to look at the world through our biblical glasses, and we're going to go into the Bible and look at biblical history. We're going to consider the event of Noah's Ark. The straw man argument. A straw man argument is made when you construct a misrepresentation or oversimplification of your opponent's position. You then easily refute your constructed straw man, but you have not responded to the substance of your opponent's argument. This is perhaps the most commonly used creationist fallacy. Watch in the next clip as Kurt Cameron sets up a straw man argument against the Big Bang for Ray Comfort to then knock down. What you're about to see was not planned. There was no script, there were no writers, there were no cameras, no production crew, no lighting, no graphic artists, and no editors. The entire program just happened. There was a big bang in our production studio. And here we are. Could you believe that? Of course you couldn't. Nobody in his right mind could. Hasty generalization. A hasty generalization attempts to reach beyond its grasp and draw major conclusions from a minor subset of data. Great claims necessitate great evidence. Creationist claims often make hasty generalizations, sometimes from a single case. In this next hasty generalization, a conclusion about the entire scientific community is drawn from a minority viewpoint. Google Project Steve for the tongue-in-cheek scientific response to this nonsense. And in the scientific community, growing numbers of scholars are expressing doubts about Darwin's theory and calling for an open hearing for their views. More than a hundred scientists, including scholars from Yale, Princeton, MIT, and the Smithsonian, signed on to a statement declaring that they were skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutation and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. Careful examination of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. The declaration ran as an ad in the prestigious New York Review of Books. Argument from Authority An argument from authority involves setting up an expert on a subject. The fallacy is not made in merely having an expert, but instead in using their authority to exempt their statements from criticism and to validate their claims. Creationists will trot out any number of PhDs for this reason, but the most egregious and humorous is Kent Hovind's authority. Dr. Hovind has his doctorate in education. He's great at explaining scientific principles. He taught science for 15 years and is an expert on this subject. Ad hominem argument. An ad hominem argument consists of issuing an attack against the person making an argument instead of addressing the substance of the argument itself. It is the opposite of an argument from authority. Poor Chuck Darwin is often the target of the ad hominem argument, as seen in the next clip with Ken Ham. Please note that Darwin meant races to mean the equivalent of species. Well, Charles Darwin wrote a book, and the title of the book was this, and The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. You see, Charles Darwin was a racist. I mean, because evol his evolutionary philosophy was inherently a racist philosophy. Appeal to the Majority 
An appeal to the majority, also known as an ad populum argument, is made when an argument is asserted to be true because the majority of people believe it to be true. This is similar to an argument from authority. The fallacy is in assuming people's belief in a proposition somehow validates it. In a democracy, the majority elects their government. Yet it is important to realize the majority can never elect the truth. Truth exists independently of whether you believe in it or not. Most Americans think the earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Quote mining. Quote mining is the aberrant practice of searching through large volumes of literature or spoken word to mine out any quotes from opponents that may seemingly support your position. In most cases, the quote is clearly taken out of context in a deliberately planned campaign of disinformation. The most common example is Darwin's quote about the eye, but Stephen Jay Gould has begun to get his share. In the following clip, Gould is referring only to his theory of punctuated equilibrium. We sorely miss you, Dr. Gould. You can no longer eloquently defend your own words. The extreme rarity of transitional forms in the fossil records persists as the trade secret of paleontology. Man on the Street Interview A man on the street interview is a combination of an appeal to the majority and quote mining. It employs several logical fallacies, and frankly, the opinion or knowledge of a person randomly met on the street has absolutely nothing to do with rational debate. We like the kid in the next clip way more than we like Ray Comfort, but he obviously just got out of bed. I can't think of any transitional forms before breakfast either. Can you give me any example of a transitional form, going from one kind of an animal to another kind? Uh, transitional form between one and another? Well, the thing is, it already is an animal, whatever it is. You mean like saying one that's halfway between this and this animal? Uh, can't think of anything right off the 